I was intrigued by the apparent scale of ambition shown by Extinction Rebellion, so I took a day off work on Monday the 15th of April and hopped on my normal 723 commuter train, past the glittering abomination that now shrouds what used to be Battersea Power Station, and on into Victoria Station and a walk down to my first stop, Parliament Square. <laughs> this was one of five main sites that Extinction Rebellion planned to occupy around London. Right in front of the Houses of Parliament, it was here that the entire event was kicked off with a multitude of colourful banners and some inspirational speeches. We're taking five sites in London today. We're in 33 countries today. We're more than six months old. This is not a political movement. This is a movement of humanity. What it means to be a human being. We are all backgrounds, all ages, all races bound together in one wish, one dream, which is that we will have a good, decent, loving future for generations and generations to come. Are you with me? And we need to be saying loud and clear, therefore, to everybody, it's time to mitigate, it's time to transform, and it's time to adapt. That's why... So what about those five sites I mentioned a moment ago? Well, Extinction Rebellion have chosen key thoroughfares in central London and given each of them a theme. Parliament Square, where we've just been, unsurprisingly carries the theme of Beyond Politics. Moving up to Piccadilly Circus, the very simple message here is love. Then it gets a bit more urgent at Marble Arch with the title This is an Emergency. Oxford Circus shouts Tell the Truth and Waterloo Bridge has a garden theme urging people to act now. And if you're a visually orientated person, then you've probably already spotted that those sites also have the happy coincidence of describing the Extinction Rebellion logo. Nice touch. So next up is Waterloo Bridge. Roundabout there by the IMAX cinema, very, very brave move by that gentleman. These are the days, my friend, and now we must As I arrived there on Monday morning, Waterloo Bridge was in the process of being transformed into London's first actual garden bridge and at a significantly lower cost than the last garden bridge that was proposed a while ago. There was already a real festival atmosphere and well over a thousand people across the entire length of the bridge from the IMAX roundabout to the south all the way up to the Strand at the north end. So here I am walking along the Strand, no traffic at all, here's all the, uh, here's all the action. Police have had to close off the road all the way up here. Uh, I must admit, I've never walked down the middle of the strand before. We're here in a slightly secluded version of uh, Waterloo Bridge, and I'm here with Mark Ward, who is from the southwest contingent of Extinction Rebellion, whose job it is, or his ward is the job, 
to occupy Waterloo Bridge for as long as it takes. So welcome to the programme, Mark, and Hi. nice to meet you, and thanks Hi. for sharing some of your time with us. No. If you can just give us a view of where you've, where you've come from, and, and literally where you've come from geographically for this yeah. week, and, and where you've come from yeah. on your journey with climate change. Yeah, what so I came up from Somerset uh, yesterday to join the International Rebellion, um, and I got involved in it uh, back in November when the movement occupied the, all the, lots of the central bridges in London. I just happened to be here visiting friends, and I went along, joined the protest, and kind of the rest is history, really. Really. Right. went back, joined the local group and we've been kind of planning for this ever since. Your groups have been working regionally and then coming together all together in yeah. London and, and each of you have a different sort of task to do in, yeah. the, in this period of time around yeah. the London locations. So the Extinction Rebellion are occupying four central places in, in the middle of London and each uh, each point has been given to a different region. So the southwest have been given Waterloo Bridge which has been occupying since about nine o'clock this morning. Right. And how's it been going so far? I mean, I've, I've filmed as I've come up to meet you and right. it's a, yeah, like yeah. a carnival Inc atmosphere. Incredible, incredible. Lots and lots of people, thousands of people. Yeah. And that'll be the same at the other points around yeah. London, really. So I, it's gone I really well. I yeah. started off this morning at uh, Parliament Square at 11 right. o'clock to see the speeches and that was there were thousands of people yeah. there. Considering you've only been doing it for six months well, as an organisation, it's been right. an astonishing right. turnout. Yeah, yeah. And then just talk us through then the demands of, or, or the, 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 you know, what, what Extinction yeah. Rebellion are trying to achieve. Yeah, so what we're trying to achieve, really, we're trying to keep it nice and simple. And we're basically, um, saying to the government, to the UK, to businesses, to everyone, um, three things. Um, one of them is that the country, in fact the world, needs to be carbon zero by 2025. That's a pretty tall order, yeah. but from what the scientists are saying, we have to do that really to avert um, climate catastrophe really. Right. Um, another thing we're saying is we want the government to tell the truth. So uh, although the government are talking about climate change, they're not giving it enough importance. They've got to really up their game and not just the government, but the media as well and yeah. how they report it. And then the third demand is that how we move forward with this is that everyone can help. So the idea is to set up citizens assemblies, which are kind of like grand juries really of people from across the UK, from different backgrounds and um, we'll come together, talk about the issues, get experts in, and then say to the government, this is what we think is the best solution. Right, so, so, uh, it's working, so it's working with the government, but trying to sort of get them to work from a, from a different point of view, rather than this, I think the, the, some aspects of the press like to think that it's some kind of movement to overthrow with Not sticks and all, stones. Yeah, and, and completely and apolitical, people from all political backgrounds, all ages, all careers, all types of have been coming to the movement, and it's very much an apolitical thing. Yeah. So I think today is the first day, but we're going to keep this going and going and going until the government actually start listening to our demands, really. Right. So um, a big call out, really. Uh, anyone who uh, lives near London, or even if you don't live near London, and you've got some time over the next week or two, just get on down here and join in with the movement and let the government know what, what we think about this. This will probably go out on Sunday, but if it's a two-week thing, if people are listening to this on yeah, Sunday, yeah. which would be whatever it is, the 22nd, then yeah. there's still time yeah. come down yeah. for the definitely, second part of the definitely. week. Definitely, yeah. Keep, we're we're going to sort of keep it going. So, yeah, whenever you can, just come along. Yeah, fantastic. And then from your point of view personally, then, you were a, started out as a marine biologist. Yep. So this yep. is obviously something that you've been doing for years and years but and very yeah. close to your heart. So you, you've you seen, I presume you will have seen the changes that have gone on, not, not only in the atmosphere, but in the oceans as well over the the course yeah. of your career. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so so just what, what do you think are the... the the, the biggest impacts that you feel have happened in, in the, even in the last 20, 30 years? Yeah, I mean, the big thing going on in the oceans is, is um, carbon dioxide acidifying the ocean, so things like coral bleaching and things. So yeah. um, the, the, the scientists are saying that even if we try and do something now, that's still going to have an effect. We're still going to lose corals, but we could use all of them if we don't do something soon. And, of course, the other big issue in the oceans is plastic pollution, which is closely linked to this, producing loads and loads of stuff that gets thrown away, mm. ends up in the sea, breaks down. So there's lots of ocean issues as well as sort of things on land to do with this but I think in a way for me the bigger issue is is the climate change issue and also extinction so it's extinction right. rebellion it's all about biodiversity loss and huge amounts of species are, are dying out across the world faster than they ever have for, for millions of years and it's, it's because of us you know? and we've been I've been hearing reports of species that are going extinct before we possibly even, even, even discover discovered them, them. That's, that's right the yeah, rate yeah, of yeah. Extinction we don't know the, the whole whole story yeah. and, and this and, and also I think what's not appreciated as far as I can understand it is, is just how interconnected we are and, ha and how these apparently insignificant small bugs and things on the floor yeah, yeah. you know might not look important when we look at them as the size of we are but actually they are the, the sort of infrastructure behind the entire ecosystem yeah. on which we absolutely depend yeah. as the apex that's predator, right uh, if you like of the and i think it, it's time really we need to realize that we're part of that ecosystem yeah. we're not separate from it uh, and so we've got to act as if we are yeah. you know and, and i think hopefully that is the change that's coming about and this this kind of movement is is going to make people start thinking more and more about right. that really yeah yeah yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Fantastic. Well, as I say, it's it's been an astonishing turnout, and there's more to more to film later yeah. on today. So um, all power to your elbow, your collective elbows, yeah. and um, <laughs> uh, thank goodness the sun's shining. It is yeah. actually a lovely day. It's a yeah. little bit chilly, but it's a yeah, beautiful yeah. sunny day for, for a turnout like this. Yeah. Um, and good good luck with everything. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Great to meet you. Thank you. I left Mark to his day one organisational tasks and jumped on the tube for a couple of stops up to Piccadilly Circus. Stop to Piccadilly Circus. I probably could have walked that bit to be honest with you. So let's have a look what's going on here. Well, there's a decent crowd, and Piccadilly Circus is undoubtedly closed for business. This appears to be uh, members of the younger generation, predominantly in the Piccadilly Circus arena. And let's be honest, they are the future. So for old buggers like me, this is what the future looks like, my friends. <laughs> well, maybe. So that's, that's uh, Piccadilly Circus, well and truly closed for business. This is Regent Street, and as you can see, I've never walked down the middle of Regent Street before either, but no problem today. I won't get back on the tube this time, I promise you, because you can walk from Piccadilly Circus around Regent Street to Oxford Circus, which is where the next set of demonstrations are taking place. And of course, we can see all the lovely opulence of uh, corporate capitalism around Regent Street. Beautiful street. The blokes that designed this, by the way, we're going to cover it over. The original architecture was designed for a, a glass roofed colonnade which would have been splendid so getting towards the business end of Regent Street now we're at the corporate cathedral that is the Apple store very nice too police are starting to show their presence a little bit and I'm just in the background hearing a little bit of commotion and cheering as we look up towards Oxford Circus you might be able to see right in the background there is the BBC right right back just beyond Oxford Circus might even go up and have a look at that later on so let's go and see what all the commotion is so they've got a boat So just like all the other sites, this is not a few people chaining themselves to railings. This is a full-scale occupation of Oxford Circus. Nothing doing traffic-wise, and if you're shopping, you're going to have a bad day, believe me. Free food for people coming in protesting. Nice touch. Loud music. Did I mention I was 50? Loud music. on the top of the boat. Come on then. How's it been going? Yeah, really good. Yeah? Really good, really big support. What about, what about the reaction of the Good Burgers of London? Have they been asking you what the hell it's all about? Yeah, or we had a few people say we're wasting, uh, wasting their time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apart from that, oh, oh, Have you managed to get across to them that it's a fairly important issue? Okay. Well, good on you. Have a good day. Enjoy the sunshine. Cheers. Anyone else? So, next stop is uh, Marble Arch, which is just down there. I think I'll walk it because there's no traffic, because all the roads are blocked. Something going on apparently. Good effort from the Marble Archers. 
Right, so that's the top end of Oxford Street. That is Park Lane. That's Marble Arch. I've never seen anything like it. Just blocking all the roads, it's incredible. This is extremely well organised. Bear in mind, let's just repeat, this is six months old, this Extinction Rebellion, and people have jumped onto this incredibly quickly, and it's quite clear that there is a huge mood of opinion for this type of protest in this country. People have travelled from every corner of the United Kingdom to be here today. There's banners from all sorts of towns and, co and counties up and down the United Kingdom. So it's out there. It's just someone needed to coordinate it and bring it all together in a national concerted effort. And it's got to be in a capital city, as Mark said earlier. Right behind Marble Arch is the very lovely Hyde Park the top end of which was being used as the main campsite for people who were planning to stay for the duration. Well, this is all very nice. It's about 20 degrees. It was meant to be 20 degrees this Friday coming at Easter, but it's obviously come early, which is ironic, I suppose, if you look at it that way, or very lucky if you look at it another way. This is an area that makes Heathrow's lost luggage department look like small fry. That's a lot of gubbins, that is. So these are the hardcore, these are the campers, they're staying here till it's done. Two weeks at least. And they've got the weather for it. <laughs> it's just a very good atmosphere, which again is quite ironic. Well, there's the relentless march of progress. And there's a tree. So there we are, I'm standing right in the middle of the northbound carriageway of Park Lane, four o'clock on a Monday afternoon. It's not a bank holiday Monday, it's a normal Monday. So you can't argue with that. Coming up to Marble Arch. There's no sign of anything waning. These people are here for the duration. And there's lots going on.